welcome back. I'm going to try something a little bit different this time. I'm um, going to try to voice over this whole thing for you, so hopefully you can hear me a little bit better. Um, I've been getting a lot of good comments on my videos. Uh, my first engine build video, if y'all go back and check the comments on that, you might find something you find a little bit funny. Uh, but for this deal, I figured I would uh, go ahead, uh, sped up a couple scenes, try not to make it so uh, monotonous. I had, had, you know, that first engine build video, some comments that were kind of funny. So uh, my main goal for this one, I wanted to get my timing chain on. So here you see me with it. This is the sealed power. Uh, it just had that part number up. And um, basically what I'm doing here, I've got my bottom gear and I'm finding my marker. There we go. Um, I like to mark my dots on the top and bottom chain. I mean, I'm sorry, on the top and bottom uh, gears. So it's real plain and easy to see at any time, you know, that uh, when we line these up in a minute, that they're directly in line with each other. Instead of getting off some, you know, if you're off a tooth, I'm not sure how many degrees that is, but it might be, could be detrimental, you know, or uh, if, you're, if your cam, like a, a better timing set would um, allow you to advance or retard it four degrees one way or the other. Uh, here you see I'm just uh, spinning that camshaft. Be sure it spins nicely. And whenever you bolt this gear on, it's going to pull the cam up against that cam plate. I may not have ever mention that before, but here I show you my timing marks are lined up. I always go dot to dot uh, with number one cylinder on top dead center. Um, on this motor, it's just a street motor. I always buy a double roller timing chain. Um, to me, it's just a better way of going. That's what that's what I was taught. So uh, a lot stronger than the factory single row. Uh, but here, I just I've got my trusty screwdriver that uh, Randall always gets on to me about. But this chain is not a true roller. If it was a true roller, uh, those little sprockets, whatever you call them, there they're not sprockets. Um, Basically, the rollers would roll in the chain, so it would give you a little bit less uh, friction and uh, basically free up a little bit of horsepower. So here, I, here I've got um, my balancer, just stuck it on for a second. And I use it to kind of turn my crank, stuck it on. I'm sure I got these lined up. Sorry, that's kind of shaky. Um, one of my plans with this was kind of do it um, like first person as a viewer so you can see kind of what I'm seeing. I know it's it's a little shaky. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it gets better. If not, I apologize. But um, I may not go as much first person next time. Just kind of set it up so you can see what I was doing here. And you see there, I, I was that's a brand new chain at sealed power. Um, I'm, I'm not very impressed with it. That was, it was a, you know, $20 cheaper than a true roller, uh, from summit. And I, you know, I wanted to save that 20 bucks. You save 20 here, there, yonder. And it's, uh, you know, it adds up, but I should have went ahead and bought the nicer chain. That's just, that's kind of sloppy for a brand new chain, I think. But, um, if you don't agree, just, you know, drop me a comment, tell me what you think about it. Uh, I've, I've pulled motors apart, uh, you know, after running a full couple seasons, um, bracket racing and the chain wasn't that loose, you know, that were ran pretty hard. Uh, so here I just, I was double checking to see which one of these cups had, uh, true oil in it. And the one that had my 50, 50 oil Lucas mix. I know I mentioned it in every video, but this is the 50, 50 Lucas mix. And I like to use that as my assembly lube. Anywhere there's going to be friction, that stuff is going to stay there. So I'm just kind of uh, drizzling it down between the gear and the plate so that that's not just a dry surface for whenever it, the motor first starts. So that's tip number six, looks like. Kind of lube between those two. And get it pushed on. 
Um, don't forget your fuel pump eccentric, that kind of the larger round thing there. I'm getting it lined up. Then you have a kind of a mushroom shaped washer that goes on. And that big bolt. Um, I forget what size the bolt is. It's, it's larger than a 3 8 thread. Um, and then we're going to torque that down. Uh, I believe it was 35 foot pounds. I'd have to go back and double check. Um, I want to say in my first video, which uh, I know I, I mentioned those comments that somebody left on my first build video, uh, how how painfully monotonous it was to watch all this. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to slow this down and help out anyone that needs the help. Um, you know, maybe you never built a motor. Maybe you've built a hundred motors. Um, you know, really it, it helps me out by having experienced people watch this too and say, Hey, you know, you missed this. I had a, I got a, a new fan. Um, I think it's uh, big and Johnson. What a name. He, uh, he said, you know, I was, I was doing something, didn't even mention it. Uh, I took those, my rubber gloves off when I was torquing something the other day, uh, just to keep from slipping that torque wrench you know it's it's very important and here i even it's a bad practice to put your torque wrench in the floor um but basically what i'm doing here i know my i'm just temporarily bolting that time and cover up and that's the balance i'm going to use i still got to clean it up but i got it lined up because sometimes you know with your new chain your new cam you put it all together and uh, your timing mark can be off so it may say uh, zero degrees on the timing cover but your balancer uh, might not actually be lined up with that zero so i've seen a couple times that you know we had to put a new mark in the timing cover itself at, at the true zero the new zero uh, and maybe it's just a, a manufacturer defect or whatever but this one seemed to be pretty spot on um, you know it's it's more important than a race motor but you know, any, anything like this, that's that's my assembly lube again. Uh, lubing that chain, you know, it, this motor will set a couple weeks before it gets fired up, but I'll lube that chain one more time before I permanently put it on, uh, or before I permanently put my cover on. And there's that, that pump. This is supposed to be a milling... Uh, high volume standard pressure so i don't i didn't actually need 100 pounds of oil pressure with this motor there's you know uh there's a lot of research on that you can you can google it but you know the more the more oil pressure you have um that that's kind of drag in your motor that's that's causing us to work harder um here you'll see i've got my uh thread tape teflon tape i always wrap mine some people use pipe dope. Uh, it's just your preference, but be sure that pickup is good and tight. I know I didn't put that as a tip, but uh, this this next next little section here is just me kind of fitting that up. And you'll notice my pickup actually hits that stud on the Mylodon uh, windage tray bolt kit. And I read that somewhere online, and I, I guess I never realized it until at this point, but I go back and get my windage tray, stick it on, and uh, it doesn't show it here. I'll sh I'll tell you in a second, but you know, getting everything test fitted that's that's a big deal. That when you're when you're building anything and you actually care about it, you got to check these things. Um, here I'm doing a little cleanup on something. Oh, I got my bolts. The bolts for the oil pump um, are kind of their own special deal. They're they're three eighths bolts. They don't have a washer and basically they're they're I think they're about two inches long and they're threaded almost the entire way. There's just a little bit of shoulder on them. Uh, but I really like to use the bolts that came out of every single place from the factory. I know they, they sell aftermarket bolt kits you can buy. Um, kind of get my windage tray balanced there. Uh, but I had to mark my oil pan pickup tube was also hitting the windage tray uh, right there at the very edge. I kind of get a better angle on it for a second. 
I'm sorry if this is moving too fast for you. Um, but yeah, I got that marked and now I'm going to probably pull my pump back off so I can uh, go ahead and cut that stud. You know, the stud, I think it needed a quarter inch chopped off of it. I went a little bit further than that just to be sure there's no, you know, no chance of it ever touching. But uh, my best advice here, I, I plastic wrapped the top of the motor, then I covered it with some rags, then I even put tape around that because you don't want any metal falling in your motor. And go find my trusty hacksaw. Maybe one video I'll do a, a big shop cleanup. Y'all can just watch, see what it starts out as. And I know I got, got some clutter everywhere, but I'm trying to, trying to use my time wisely here. Get this motor. I hate, I hate leaving a motor that's, um, you know, a part, dust, dirt, bugs, anything can get into it. So I try to seal it up after every time I work on it. But ideally you'd want to do this over three or four days and finish your motor up, but that's not how my schedules work. So before I cut that uh, stud off, I went ahead and threaded two nuts down onto it so that I could unthread it and it would kind of, it would allow the nut to be able to screw off and on. And here you'll see, I just got a simple crescent wrench, adjustable wrench, if you want to call it that, um, to clearance that, bent it down. You know, I would, I didn't want to get a ball peen hammer out and, and whack the, uh, windage tray because you know it might slip and hit the hit the crank it's, you know it's not good to hit your crank with a hammer uh forcefully if you're just if you want to hear it ring like uncle, uncle tony you can but uh so here i just kind of get a bird's eye view get that get that pickup screwed down some and you won't see here in a minute a lot of times you know i could i can the pump's not permanently on right now um, I want to check it, checking, just checking clearances. Uh, but I can, I can get, I think that sheet of paper is about, uh, doubled over three or four times. So I would guess that's probably 10 to 15 thousandths between there now. I'm happy with that. I'd like for it to be a little bit more and I may massage it later. I don't, I don't have my oil pan on yet. Um, that's the point of this video, but let's see how we're doing here. 12. Uh, but basically, you know, checking these clearances, that stuff's important. Um, get my oil pan out, get it cleaned back up. I want you to kind of see in the video, I painted that oil pan four or five years ago for a different motor. And that was, I believe it was the same duplicolor paint. Um, or it was, you know, it, they both claim to be Chrysler blue that, that after I sprayed that oil pan, it sat in the shop out of the sunlight you know, it was kind of dusty, but I'm not really sure why the newer, newer blue is much brighter. I kind of like that older blue color and maybe it'll, you know, after I get everything in and paint it, it'll fade. I'll put another coat on the oil pan. Uh, but here I'm checking my pickup clearance to the bottom of the oil pan and I go back to my trusty red grease. Uh, just put masking tape over that. I get the grease about an eighth inch thick in the, um, you know, all the way around the highest points. And that way, whenever you drop that on, drop your oil pan on, no gaskets, um, you can see if it touches anywhere. Cause if that pickup tube is touching that, it's going to vibrate. Uh, it's going to, you know, it might stress crack the tube, but that's basically how you do it. You just, uh, look for your red grease inside your pan. If it's clean, you're good. You know, your oil pan gaskets probably, at least a sixteenth of an inch thick, maybe an eighth. Um, so come back to that, real simple. Just peel it off, throw it away. Um, I know we're, it looks seems like we're moving kind of fast here, but tip number ten. This is one my dad was really big on was priming your oil pump. Um, I poured some down that that section of it just to kind of lube it. I've got I've got the pickup end into uh, that's just straight ten W thirty oil. And then with my DeWalt drill, I just go really, really slow. The camera angle's kind of bad, but, um, you know, if you, you spin it eight or 10 times, it, it should be pumping right through there and you can see it real nicely. So it, that's basically, I know that's going to be a good pump. I mean, it, if it pumps at 10, 10 RPM, you know, but 
uh, I'll thank y'all for watching. This is just a, a kind of a quick video. I was getting back to you uh, next time. I hope I can get my oil pan buttoned up and front cover. So thank y'all.